Hallelujah. Worship is in the atmosphere. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on. Give God the glory on this morning. For his awesomeness. We're going to get right into the word of God, but we thank God just that he is mindful of us, of us that he dwells in our praises. Hallelujah. We're going to go to St. John, the 17th chapter, the 20th and the 21st verses. Matthew, the 6th chapter, the 9th and 10th verses. Matthew, the 18th chapter, the 21st and the 22nd verses. And Colossians 3 and 13. It seems like a lot, but, um, but it, it's, it, I need, we need these scriptures to make the connection. First in St. John 17, chapter, the 20th and the 21st verses, it says, Neither I pray for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Matthew 6, chapter the ninth and 10th verses. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Uh, the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 18th chapter, the 21st and the 22nd verse. Then Peter, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall I tell my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? And Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but 70 times seven. Mm. And finally, Colossians 3 and 13, forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. There were two friends, there's a story about two friends who were walking through the desert. During some point of their journey, they had an argument. And so the one friend slapped the other one in the face. The one who got slapped, he was hurt. And without saying anything, he wrote in the sand. Today, my best friend slapped me in the face. So they kept walking on and walking on their journey until they ran into an oasis. So they decided that they were gonna take the bath, take a bath. So the friend that got slapped got stuck in the mud and started drowning. But the friend who had slapped him saved him. So after he recovered from near drowning, he found a stone. And on that stone, he wrote the words, today, my best friend saved my life. Mm. Mm. So the friend who both slapped him and saved him, he said, after I hurt you, I'm just curious, after I hurt you, you wrote in the sand, but when I saved you, you wrote on a stone. And he said, why did you do that? And the friend replied, he says, when someone hurts us, we should write it down on, on, in sand so the winds of forgiveness can blow it away. All right. He <laughs> says, when someone does something good to us, we must engrave it in a stone where it can never be erased away. As we have been seeking God during our revival in January, the Lord had impressed upon Pastor Roy and I that one of our major assignments for this upcoming decade, and he made, us, he made it very clear, not for this year, but for this upcoming decade, is that, we're, that we should raise up our army of prayer warriors and how for this decade we should sincerely, sincerely seek God for a spirit of revival. Mm -hmm. But he said, but before you go into that, he said, a foundation needs to be laid concerning the importance of unity. That's why I'm pulling that scripture from St. John in the, in the scripture from Colossians. He said, so he said, you must lay a foundation about the importance of unity. So during my next few teaching opportunities, I'm gonna be focusing on one of the attributes of the kingdom, which is unity. I'm going to be focusing on forgiveness and finally the anatomy of a prayer and how revival looks. So in this, so in this decade, what we're, what we're really seeking, God, 
we're really seeking God for a miracles of our hearts. Yes. Because one of the number one reasons that hinders our prayers is unforgiveness. Uh -huh. Amen. Speak and life. That has, That's that has, right, Carolyn. That has to be Speak dealt life. with. It's no need of faking game like we okay and we all right. We love everybody. Who, you know, when we have unforgiveness in our heart. And forgive is simply, forgive really is a financial term, which means to cancel a debt. It's like when they say they're going to forgive your student loan. They're going to forgive they're gonna they're gonna forgive a certain amount that you owe. So forgiveness this means that I cancel Amen. a debt. And the the Greek word for debt is not a mystery. This means to owe somebody something. And forgiveness and what forgiveness means is that I give up resentment or claim uh -huh. or requital for an for an offense or something that has been done wrong to me. So in other words, I'm no longer gonna make a claim against that that person. Speak life. And when it comes to Speak forgiveness. Life. It's one of the most essential needs of people. Well, we need to be both forgiven and we need to forgive others. And when it comes to forgiveness, forgiveness and compassion, they're connected because it takes compassion to make forgiveness possible. And as we forgive, that's a way of restoring and healing. Now, it costs to forgive. Yes, it does. I'm not saying forgiveness is easy. That that's one word you won't hear me use throughout this message. It's not easy, but it's necessary. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, the Lord would never tell us to do something that was impossible outside of Him. Amen. So it's necessary. So what it does, it, it, it we, the forgiveness is reserved for those who have wronged us. In other words, it's. Forgiveness is for those where we have, where blame has been assigned. It's your fault. You know, you did that to me. So that's what forgiveness is for. It's, it's for people where we have assigned blame to. That's right. Like I say, it's, it's not easy. A lot of times it's hard, especially when we're dealing, when you're in a long-term relationship. But it is necessary if we are going to function properly. Now, before I deal deal with this particular part of the message on forgiveness, I'm gonna just want to go back to St. John 17, the 17th chapter, and we're gonna zero in on the 21st verse. Now, St. John 17, the 17th chapter, that's what I call the Lord's Prayer. Because okay. this is him actually throughout, he's really praying to the Father about, you know, about you know his glory and how he wants the kingdom to look. So, so if you look at St. John the 21st verse. Remember, we're talking about prayer. We're talking about the kingdom on today. We're talking about how should the kingdom look? How should kingdom citizens function in the kingdom? Amen. So when we look at verse 21, Jesus lets us know that one of the desires for the kingdom is unity. Yes. Unity. For, his, for his request in that verse is simple, that they may that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. And he goes on further to say there's a reason why he wants this done, not only for our benefit, so, but also that the world will believe, that the world will believe on him. Now that, now when, we, when we zero in on that phrase, be one in this particular verse, Christian, when we're talking about Christian unity, uh, get out of your minds. We're not talking about an organization. We're not talking about external. That's why we know he's not talking about denominations. It's, it's, and furthermore, I think that he saw in the future that denominations was going to be an issue in the body of Christ. So I'm th so he's saying, you know what? Let me nip that in the bud before you even bring up, before that even comes into existence. So when he's talking about Christian unity, it's not, like I say, it's not, a, it's not an organization, it's not, it's not external. So what it's based on, it's based on our shared union in Christ. So if, if, so if you're in Christ, I'm not, I, I don't care what you label yourself. If you're in Christ, that unity has been formed, that union has been formed by mere virtue that we're all in Christ. Christ. So Speak that's life. the unity he's Speak that's the life. unity he's, he's speaking about. And so and, and he gives it and, and to show you that's what he's talking about. He even goes on to say, just like the son is in the father, 
-hmm. It's like the Father is in the Son. Amen. Mm -hmm. We are in Christ. Yes, so that is what makes us one. Speak so life. that's the unity, that, that's the shared union that he's talking about on this morning. So now let's go over to the Gospel of uh, St. Matthew, the 6th chapter, the ninth and the 10th verse. Well, someone called, like I say, people call this the Lord's Prayer um, also. So this is what he says. He says in, in verse 9 and 10, he says, After this manner, therefore pray ye our Father which art in heaven. Who is praying? The people of the kingdom. You know, wherever, and wherever there's a kingdom, there's a king and there's citizens. And the king rules. And the kingdom is monarchy. The king rules. So what he said, after this manner, therefore pray ye our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So, okay, so what he's basically saying here, whatever's going on in heaven, we have to match that. Amen. So, and so, and so one of the things he's telling us is that we need to match the unity. Yeah. So, and how, and so, so how, how does it look in heaven? Well, let's go to first John five and seven. It says, for there are three that bear record in heaven. Remember, he says "Thou will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Amen. There are three that bear record in heaven. It says it's the father, the word. And the Holy Ghost, and what did it say? And these three are one. Mm. They're one in purpose. They're, 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 they're one in desire. So our unity is supposed to mimic or be a replica of what's going on in heaven. Mm -hmm. And like I said, wherever there is a, wherever there's a kingdom, there, 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 uh, there's a king, there are citizens, there's a location, and more important, that king sets the atmosphere of the kingdom. Yes. And Jesus just told us in St. John 17 and 17 and 21, he wants us to be one. It's like him and the Father are one. When we go to 1 John 5 and 7, how are they operating in heaven? Yes. They're one. one. Yes. So that's the unity that he's that he's talking about. Thank you, Jesus. That we're, that yes. we're, that we're supposed to have yes. Yes. on this yes. morning. Yes. Now let's now let's move on to how how and why is it so important for forgiveness to function in order for unity to have its free course. So let's go to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter, the 38th and the 39th verse. Teach me. This is Jesus talking. He said, ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye, and a two for a two. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on their right cheek, turn him the other also. Now, this is a common phrase that Jesus uses throughout his discourses. And he does, and what, he'll, what, he'll, what he'll basically say, he'll say, well, you have read, but I say, right. he'll say, you have read, but I say. Right. And so what, he, what, so what we see in this particular passage, what Jesus is doing, what he's doing, he's presenting, he's, he, he, he quotes this before he's going to present the true standard for dealing with disputes and offenses. So because he makes the statement, eye for eye. So he's let them know, I know what the law says. You know, I'm, I'm fully, I'm, I'm fully aware. But what? And he's saying that also. He's saying an eye for an eye because he knows that retaliation is just a natural reaction. Right. So he said, I know it's a natural reaction, and I, and he, and he, and he, and he said, he's saying, don't play with me because I know the word, I know the law. Right. And so in doing this, what he does, <laughs> he's establishing that fact. He's furthermore, he's quoting the, from the principle of lex talonos, which means an eye. For I, and this particular this particular uh, system was put in place back in the Old Testament, and the reason why they did it, it had to do with civil justice, yeah. and they did it because to promote fairness, because they didn't want someone saying, well, okay, well you you kill my sheep, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kill a hundred of your sheep. So this so this law of eye for eye, it was it was put in place for fairness. And also, it was put in place to curtail further crime or prevent excessive punishment. Right. 
So, so it was a system of fairness when they said an eye for eye. But he says, but you know what? That's that's what you said. But he but he said that's what you have read. He said, but this is what I not I now say. Mm -hmm. And then we go on. If you remember the conversation between Jesus and Peter in the 18th chapter of Matthew, and it's the 21st and the um 22nd verses, and it says, and Peter. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, yeah. how all shall I shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? He says, to seven times, Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee, until seven times. He says, but 70 times seven. Now, the now if you study, if you study Jewish history, the rabbi said that said that you should forgive a person three times. So that's why Peter thought he was really being gracious because he says, okay, I'm going to do more than three times. I'm going to come to the Lord. I'm going to double it. I'm going to say, I'm going to forgive him seven times. He said, I know I'm doing good when I double it. You know, I'm going over and beyond. Because <laughs> um, Peter knew human nature. So Peter's question does has to do with forgiveness. Can I put a limit on it, God? You know, can I, can I, can I just cut them off at seven? So he, because he knew human nature. He knew people just going, people can just keep doing stuff over and over and over again. So he says, what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going I'm to cut you some slack. I'm going to add four onto that three, and I'm going to do seven. <laughs> so, but what Jesus stated, he says, no, it needs to be unlimited. So what Jesus was, so what Jesus was saying, he said, forgiveness is unlimited. So what he basically was saying is that when it comes to forgiveness, forgiveness is qualitative. It's not quantitative. Mm. Now, those who study stats, you know the difference between the two. Yep. It's qualitative. It's not quantitative. Right. Under, in other words, you cannot count it. Right. You don't count forgiveness. You, it's, it's like saying, it's like, giving, it's like me saying, okay, you say you know, you got saved today, and I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a stack of fifty grace tokens. Once you run out of those fifty grace tokens, there's no more grace for you. Mm. So he said, you you don't count it. What the bottom line is, the law keeps count, but grace does not. Hallelujah. Amen. This Thank thing, this thing, if grace count yes, kept count, you know, I said, oh Lord, I, you know what? I would be messed up. I've been saved like what seventy three forty. 47 years, Do you can you imagine that I only had 50 grace tokens when I got saved? Amen. That's like what? A little bit over one grace token a year. Right. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be messed up in a bad way if, if, if when I joined the church and took the right hand of fellowship, the pastor gave me a bag. Here you go. Here you go, sweetheart. You got 50. You know, use Man. them, use them spare, you know, Man. use them very, very, very carefully. Man. So the law keeps count. Grace does not. And I am so yes. glad Hallelujah. that yes, it's it like that. But if if the kingdom is going to function properly, if his will is going to be done in earth as it is in heaven. We got to walk in oneness. Thank you, Jesus. And the only Thank way to Jesus. walk Amen, in Carolyn. oneness is that Thank we have to deal with unforgiveness. We have to do. We have to do like the two friends Thank walking. You. When someone does something to you, write it in sand so you can just blow it away. Time, time will heal. And when someone does something good for you, write it on the stone. You know, they bless me today, Lord. This, thank you for that. I God, I give you the glory. I wasn't looking for that. I'm just gonna write this on the stone so that I can remember it. So forgiveness and unity are inseparable. Mm -hmm. I almost want to make them. I almost want to make them like synonyms. Mm -hmm. But I know I can't. I know I can't start writing a whole new dictionary. But forgiveness and unity are inseparable. Yes, hand in hand. Yes. You can't have one without the other. Yes. And we're gonna function in the kingdom. Yes, hallelujah. We have to. We, we have to remember. That we are one based on our union with That's Christ. Right. Hallelujah. And finally, we see Paul exhorting the Colossian church in Colossians 3 and 13. He says, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. He did that because he knew there was going to be some issues. 
He would, Amen. if there wasn't going to be a need for us to forgive one another, we wouldn't need the scripture. Mm -hmm. So that lets us know evidently it's going to be some circumstances and like they say, situations that's going to come up that's going to require me to forgive someone and for me to ask forgiveness. Yes, Lord. And not only that, but forgiveness is, forgiveness is the image of God. You know, he, he says, you know, I want you to be one so that the world know that I'm real. He said, I want you to forgive and, and love one another so that some people say, I know God is real because I remember back in the day, they, them, them two was fighting like cats and dogs. Mm -hmm. so he said, I know God is real because they talking now. Forgiveness is the image of God. Mm. It is the key to our spiritual unity in the church. And you know, based really what forgiveness Amen, is, Amen. forgiveness is Amen. a fort of protection around unity. Because with, with forgiveness is the enemy can't get in. He can't do us no harm. So it's like, it's, it's a fortress. It's a, our protection against unity, unity, against for unity. And furthermore, we're at our best when we're forgiven. Yes, we are. Because of the spirit that we're in. That means that we're not judgmental. That means that I ain't bitter. That means I ain't mad at you. Right. That means I ain't, I'm not hostile. And it means that we have the ability to be on one accord. Speak life. Mm -hmm. Speak life. So remember, the kingdom is going to function. We got to function in unity. Yes. And in order for unity to exist, we have to have that spirit that spirit of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, let it let it go so you can see what God has planned. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says the pure in heart best you see God. I want to see God. Me yes. too. You know, you know, and, and, and if, if I have to let it go to see what God God's plan for my life yes. and God's purpose for my life is much more important than me holding on to something. That's right, girl. Let it go. Amen. It's much, it's much Amen. more important. Like oftentimes, you know, when people are becoming, you know, thinking that, you know, that they have made me angry, they made me upset. I said, you know what? I said, that wasn't even, that wasn't even. I that's said, serious. I said, sweetheart, that, that wasn't even that serious. I, I know okay. that's right, baby. I said, I'm good. Amen. I'm good. Amen. So, Amen. I'm going to close. But uh, what we're going to do, there, um, this, there, if you can, I want you to stay with me because there are two more parts to this message. We're talking about the next de decade of prayer. We're talking about the next decade being being a, a spirit of revival. Haven't, haven't we had enough decades of name it and claim it? Haven't we had enough decades of I want a Benz, I want a house on the hill? Haven't we had enough, haven't we had enough decades of that? Should we, should, should we not move into a decade of the kingdom? Yes. yes Should Lord. we now move into a decade of unity? Yes, yes Lord. Even, you know what? Even enemies will come together to fight another enemy. Yes, they will. Yeah. Even enemies will come together for a common cause. You see that in, you see that in the news on all the different wars that are going, going on. A lot of these wars, if, if, if you just do the background and you do your research, countries, countries are coming together that wouldn't talk to each other because they have a common enemy. We're all we're all one in Christ, and we all have a common in common enemy. Yes, we do. And it's not each other. Mm -hmm. It's not each other. So, uh, so t today I just want us to deal with lay the foundation about prayer and unity, and how important forgiveness is. Now, we'll, and, and we'll deal with the the next two segments. The next segment we're going to deal with unforgiveness, refusing to forgive. How that hinders not only our walk with the Lord, but how we're hurting the body of Christ as a whole. You know how they say sometimes you need to take one for the team? Yep. Sometimes we just need to take one for the body of Christ. Amen. God, because your, your purpose and the will, your will being done on earth, in earth as it is in heaven, is much more important than me holding on to a grudge. Look at the big picture. It's not always, it's not about us. It's not about me. It's about his will being done in earth as it is in heaven. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And the last part of, of this, um, I just titled it the prayer series. I don't have no fancy name for it. I say prayer series. 
And so we're going to deal, part two, we're going to deal with how unforgiveness hinders our walk and how it hinders the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. In part three, we're going to deal with the anatomy of prayer in the anatomy of a revival. Everyone is standing at this time. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just give you the glory and the praise, God. Hallelujah. God, we just ask for a miracle of the heart, God. Yes, God. Touch our heart, God. Synthesize it, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, that we may forgive others, God, just like you have forgiven us. And we'll give the glory in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We just thank you for coming out on this morning. We thank you. taking time out just to, to view or to like King of Glory Ministries. We don't take it for granted. We appreciate you and hopefully if we pray that we'll that you'll tune in with us on next week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank